Hi, seven o'clock, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, welcome to the uh, April 13th uh, special meeting of the Roxbury Board of Finance. Um, the main purpose of this meeting is to discuss the proposed budget so that we can um, proceed with uh, putting something out in front of the public. Uh, if you're not speaking, please put your uh, uh, phone, your computer on mute um, so that we aren't uh, trying to compete with that. A um, couple of things before we get started. Um, we have a quorum here. I'm Andy Engel, the uh, chairman of the committee. Um, and welcome to the public. There is a public comment period uh, at the beginning of this meeting. Um, I need to keep it brief uh, for several reasons. The, uh, we have one member who has a hard stop at eight o'clock. He needs to go. Uh, so I'd like to uh, give him uh, as much time to participate as a member as possible. Um, secondly, we do have a public hearing scheduled where the public will have the opportunity to speak uh, at length about the uh, budget. Um, so once we enter the public comment period, I'm going to limit the length of uh, comments to two minutes. Um, I think that's reasonable considering we have uh, uh, only a couple of controversial things, uh, the first of which is the uh, setting of the selectman salary. Um, believe me, the Board of Finance is very familiar with the two main arguments for and against that. One being that the uh, selectman is the uh, essentially the CEO of the town and we need to be offering a large enough salary to uh, attract good candidates. Uh, and the second being that whoever becomes first selectman once Barbara is no longer in that position, uh, won't have her years of experience and uh, should be starting out at a uh, lower salary the way um, one hires an apprentice, whatever. Um, so those are the two main points. If um, you have something other than one of them to make, we'd be very interested in hearing that. Otherwise, I'd ask you to keep it mainly to uh, what number do you think uh, we should be talking about? And uh, are there other comments such as, you know, uh, do we have too big a surplus? That's the other issue that's been going around. Um, to that point, there's some information that's come out in the past week, uh, at least to my attention, that I hadn't been thinking of uh, and in one case hadn't been aware of. The first is that the uh, Wetlands Commission uh, was recently served with a lawsuit. Um, so I believe that we're probably going to have to up our legal contingency to um, uh, contend with that. Um, and secondly, uh, it's a point Barbara's been making all along, one I hadn't considered to the degree that maybe I should have. Uh, we have, I'm not sure how many bridges and culverts in town, most of which need um, a lot of work. Uh, so we may have less money in our uh, general fund uh, as a practical matter than uh, people think that we do. I'm going to stop talking now. Those are the main things I wanted to go over. Uh, first order of business is to go over the minutes from the last meeting. Has everyone had an opportunity to read them? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, and who's the second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from the last meeting, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, um, jumping right into the uh, public comment. Um, uh, please uh, state your, uh, if you have something to say, please state your name and go at it. Uh, keep your comments short, as I said, two minutes so that we can uh, uh, allow Paul to get to um, his other obligation. Thanks much. No one. Uh, yeah, I'll just a, a free for all, or we just. <laughs> well, um, put a hand up. I'll do this. Mark Zerby here. Okay, go ahead, Mark. Mark Zerby, seven Wakeley Road. Yeah, I did send you guys uh, on the Board of Finance. I sent you an email. So I, I want to, I'm not going to go through that again. But the thing that the one thing I want to emphasize, in addition to uh, choosing or, or giving someone a salary that is, um, you know, is is the current salary, not reducing it, I just think we want to make this attractive to 
uh, people and we want to attract the best person for the role. And uh, the idea that like, you don't want people to, you know, you don't want them doing it for the money, I think is, is a really poor argument. Um, no one's doing it for the money. I mean, 82,000 versus 70,000, I don't think is getting anyone, you know, no one's getting rich from that. So I really think uh, get the best person. And I do think you can attract someone who's got experience that maybe the current first select men or the select men um, don't have. So just because they're new doesn't mean they don't possess skills and expertise and experience that would be very important and attractive and useful. Um, I don't think we should assume Um, let's see, how can we do this in a more orderly fashion? I didn't see we had four screens of people who uh, might wish to speak. Um, I'll just go, the next person I see uh, says, Jer's iPhone. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add? Hmm. Doesn't look like it. Um, okay, next person I see is- uh, Raise their hand, I think there is, isn't there, Julie? Is there a way to raise your hand? There is. Yes, I was just going to say that. Okay. Um, okay. There is. I saw Paul Lazeski's hand up. Yeah, I, I won't take long, but uh, along the, the what uh, Mark was saying, um, you know, I have a real concern. Um, you know, uh, I know that we do have issues like you were just talking. I was unaware of all the issues of the culverts and the, the road work, but that being said, you know, we have a very healthy grand list. I mean, I think building permits are flying out of the town hall. And um, the grand list is probably the healthiest, healthiest it's been in a long time with the real estate market the way that it is and the price of homes. And, you know, there's very few homes for sale in Roxbury right now because there's just, they're being gobbled up um, at very good prices. So, you know, the grand list is, in, and all these people are, adding to their houses and fixing them up and getting permits and what have you. Um, and it, it, you'll have to excuse my ignorance, but I also, am I, I am a, of the understanding that um, the first selectman is also in charge of the road crew. Is that true? That is true. Like Barbara, I know that Butch, now what's Butch's position? Butch is, I know, the sort of the head of the, not the head, but the, the, the main guy for the road crew the most seniority or whatever, but the first selectman, can you explain that to me? Yep, um, we have five people. Uh, one is a road foreman. And um, so he is supposed to give them the day-to-day -day things that they need to work on. <clears throat> I'm very much involved with that. I'm also very much involved in all of the paperwork, the bid documents, um, really anything that involves paper that has to go through that office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's like, I, you know, we, we went through purchasing a truck not too long ago involved the board of selectmen and the, and the board of finance, but um, seeking grants for roads, et cetera. Uh, there's a, we're going to have a bridge project. I deal with the town and not the town engineer, but an engineer, if we hire one for certain projects, I mean, it's, they deal with a lot of things, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, complaints that come in about the roads or during storms, trying to get trees, hiring people to help. And uh, I'm very much involved with the public works. Okay. So it's, so it's public's work, public works and the job as first select person. Um, you know, and I, I you know, um, there's still, you know, we may be a smaller town than surrounding towns. And I was just reading in the newspaper that, you know, we are, we are a smaller town than Washington, but you know, there's still all the paperwork and there's still the, there's a lot involved and you still have to fill out the same forms. You still have to do the grant writing. You have to do, there's so much involved. And to, this is the CEO of the town. You know, this is such an important position. This is your key. This is this is the person that's sort of the 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 focus, the the nexus of the town through which everything else radiates and comes in and out. And so this is such a crucial crucial position that we need to attract and you know, 
I know it's considered a, from what I understand, uh, again, excuse my ignorance, but it's sort of considered a part-time position, but I doubt very much that it's not part-time. Who's, who thinks that? I don't know. I heard somebody said, you know, but it's not, this is a full-time position and it's evenings, it's weekends. It's not just meetings, but it's going to events and going to, you know, it's very involved. And, um, you know, I, I'm in the position, I mean, my, I'm in the, of the mind that keep the salary where it is because it's so involved. Um, and again, this is your CEO of the town. Oh, thank and, you. I think, uh... you know, I'm, that's what I'm very concerned about. Um, so that's where I stand. And uh, thank you for your I, I, that's, that's where I really think that's, I, I won't say anymore. I'll, I'll give up my, um, give up the floor now. So. Thank you. I'm okay. Sorry. Next person I see on my screen is uh, Jennifer Skane Tizo. Do you care to say anything? Yeah, I do. I think the the new person coming in should make the same exact salary. They're going to be doing the same amount of work. And um, and and like the gentleman said before, you know, this next person that's coming in isn't going to be without experience. I mean, we're not going to you know pick somebody off the street and say, "Hey, do you want to do this?" You know, the next person coming in is going to have to be qualified. You know, and I think you pay for quality. You get what you pay for. Okay, and and um, we've had an extraordinary. Uh, amount of success in this town because of Barbara and it's come you know with her sacrificing um weekends time with her family you know um all of these things I mean she is never not on duty she gives her personal cell phone out which she used to <laughs> you know and to have the next person come in and and fill these shoes for less money is absolutely ludicrous and so that's what I have to say um and I'll put myself on mute thank you Jennifer um Sarah Laurie, it looks like you're the next person uh, up. Hi, good evening. I think that uh, from past meetings, you know where I stand in terms of the mm -hmm. salary. Um, what I would like to uh, focus on is the um, issues with the, the surplus related to the 3 million projected for the end of June. Um, I'm not saying that we need to use that uh, full 1 million that would be represented after the two months of expenses were taken out. But I do think that it would be only fair to use a large portion of that to buy back down on the budget. Um, and I have some questions um, regarding the numbers that were just submitted to the finance board today or for tonight's meeting of an increase in the budget from where it came from the board of selectmen. So I'd like to know where those changes arose from. Depends on what uh, specific changes you're talking about. Uh, there were increases to um, the selectman salary line, which um, makes sense. Um, there was an increase to the selectman's office, the finance director, the tax collector, and the town hall. Oh, some of this stuff happened in executive session, and because we're doing this a little bit of out of order, we will we would be coming forward with some of those. Barbara, do I have this right, Andy? We'd be coming forward with those recommendations outside of executive session. Right, they'll be addressed that's later on. In the numbers that Great. Dylan had the benefit. That's yep. So that's that's where the that's where the difference comes in. Once we once we go to our regular business, then the, the items that were um, discussed in executive session, you can't do business. You can't make decisions in executive session. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, answering those further along. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next person uh, is, is Crystal, but somehow I doubt that's your name. Um. Yes. My name is Tom, my name is Tom O'Connell. Um, I was uh, in IBM Finance for 38 years, so I have some significant history in uh, budgeting and everything. And like Sarah just said, um, on the three million dollars being projected in the I'll call it the slush fund slash contingency, that seems to be a lot of money for a town like Roxbury. Uh, it seems to be a lot more than this town really needs. And I'm wondering what analysis has been done by the finance committee. For example, um, what is Washington and Bridgewater? What is their percentages? Even though it's a macro view, 
if you just cut into percentages because there are significant items that will come out every year for whatever. Question is how much is the town taken out of that fund in the past three years, five years for, need, for needed items? I mean, have they taken out $2 million for items? Have they taken out 300,000? I mean, the number seems astronomical to me based on the town's overall budget. And like Sarah said, hey guys, let's, you know, it's COVID-19. A lot of the town people are hurting. Barbara's leaving this year. Let her go out in a banner of she gave some money back to the people so they can live their lives a little bit better since, you know, I lived here for 35 years. So I've paid into that fund quite a lot. And it's about time maybe some of that fun comes back to the, the people in the town. I mean, I'd like to see an analysis maybe from Kim that says, what are the debits in the past three years? What are the credits? What does the town of Washington have? What does the town of Bridgewater have? Even though each town has its own, even though each town has its own uniqueness, what major items have hit that line and do a, do a deep dive on that line. Cause the number, when I saw that number, I was horrified to tell you the truth. I just said, what is Little Roxbury doing with $3 million in their slush fund? So. Hey Tom, thank you. Your, be, your two ahead. minutes is up. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mark has already spoken. Uh, I see Megan next. Megan, have you got anything you care to say? I'm going to guess not. Uh, next, I see Jer's iPhone. Uh, yeah, this is Aaron. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Okay. I was asking a question. Um, instead of bonding our capital expenditures, we, you know, save money over a number of years for each capital item. Is, is that capital savings account included in that three million dollar fund, fund balance? Barbara, there's a question for you. How does that work? Could you, you can explain it better than I can. You're muted. Barbara, you're muted. I'm gonna let Kim Barron answer that. She's got okay. the numbers right in front of her. Okay. Did I unmute myself? Can yes. everybody hear me? Yep. Okay, so the uh the outlay for capital projects is in a capital projects fund. It's a separate fund and it's not included in the um, unassigned fund balance. The unassigned fund balance pertains to just the general fund. Okay, thank you. Yep. And the board of finance um, had a policy, the previous board, that they would like to have two to two and a half months worth of um funds available in case something catastrophic happened so that's been in effect for quite some time correct um, and in these days i mean you were talking um or maybe it was the last board about going you know out for 90 days so it is not um well first of all i, I i'm not speaking you go right ahead. no let's uh let's yep. let the public uh, yep. continue on um, we can discuss these issues as a board uh, going forward right now. Um, it's just to hear some input. Um, so Megan, uh, Jer's iPhone, uh, was there anyone who cared to say anything there? No, I believe the next one I see after that is Ed Katie, the 5087 number. Um, Lisa Worth Huber, you're up if you care to say anything. Yeah, just quickly, I want to join the chorus about the select person's, the next selects person's salary, and to um, say that I also feel that it's important that we keep it at the rate that Barbara is receiving um, for all the reasons that people have already expressed, 
and Barbara has done a stellar job. And for us to be able to come close to being able to match somebody who's done that kind of work, we need to be able to pay that type of salary. And thank you, Barbara. I think we're all feeling very sad that you're leaving. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, next is Mary Ann Sieber. Hi, everyone. Um, I, uh, it, it's kind of like a, a flip question for Barbara Henry. I mean, do you work 40 hours a week? I, I probably not. Um, and this town has gotten very used to having um, the services of the first selectman's office 24 seven. And I would expect that most residents would like that kind of service to continue. And therefore I do believe that the salary should stay the same. Um, I agree that if we want to attract high quality talent, we have to make it desirable. And I concur with my husband that, yeah, nobody's getting rich um, off this salary for sure. People come into this job because they wanna serve our town. And as far as the um, fund balance is concerned, um, I prefer to see this as a rainy, rainy day fund rather than a slush fund. And um, $3 million is an awful lot of money. And whether we live in Roxbury or Washington or Brookfield like we used to, to fill potholes is expensive or to repair roads and bridges. Um, and we actually, when we lived in, in uh, Brookfield a number of years ago, we had a, a catastrophe. We had um, a terrible event occur in town and we needed that kind of money to pay the bills. So, um, you know, it's recommended for households to have some money available if something happens. And I think the town needs to be very prudent. Um, Three million is a lot, but if, if we wanna make a capital improvement, uh, it's gonna cost a lot of money. So that's my opinion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marianne. Next is Elaine Curley. Hello, Elaine. You're muted. Unmute. Thank you. I'm here. I'd like to say thank you to the Board of Finance for the fine work they're doing. And I tuned in this evening because um, I like many, um, I was very surprised to hear about the um, the potential change in the selectman salary. And, um, you know, I just would like to say 24 years is a long time. I believe that the candidate we're searching for will be qualified and well-deserved of the full salary. Uh, as far as the rest of the finance world, I, um, I'm, I don't wear that hat. So I'm going to refrain from discussion on the rest of it. Thank you very much for hearing me. Thank you, Elaine. Um, next, I see Kim Barron, but I assume she's here on business. Uh, how about Liz Lacey? Do you have anything you care to add, Liz? Thank you. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, next one I see is Lance Reynolds. Lance covers us for the Washington, uh, for the uh, Oh, right, reporter. Okay. Um, well, welcome. Glad you're here. Um, Kim Pakrivka, um, I assume you're, you're here as the tax collector, or uh, do you have something to add? Nothing to add. Thank you. Thank Just you, Kim. Okay, then I see uh, Denise Dickens, uh, if you care to say. Hi anything. there. Yes, uh, thank you for hearing me out. I am here and I also agree with many others on this meeting. I believe that we should keep the salary of the board selectmen uh, as is and it should not be reduced. Um, also, just want to say uh, very sorry to see Barbara go and thank mm -hmm. you for her service. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you very much. Um, the last person I see uh, is Tina Brockett. Tina, have you got anything you'd like to add? 
thank you for having us this evening. I would echo everyone's comments on the selectman salary. Uh, and three million also seems like an extraordinary amount for us to have as a town. And whether that uh, portion of the three million being roughly one million goes to reduce the tax burden or goes to something that would benefit the town entirely that's maybe a little more forward looking um, that would save us money long term. And I have no numbers or knowledge on details, but something in the nature of changing part of the transfer station to be able to compost and reduce our cost for that as well as benefit the town. Maybe burying the power lines in the center of town so we have an area that's more likely to not lose power at a given time. Solar panels in the center of town. I'm not really creative enough to come up with a lot of ideas, but if it's there, can we be thinking about something that would benefit all of us longer term? Thank you. Thank you very much. And let's see, another screen. Uh, let's see, Tina Brockett. Rob Horgan, do you have anything you'd like to add? Rob, are you there? Okay, I'll assume you're there and quiet. Uh, next one I see is just a phone number, 203-994-41, uh, or nine, yeah, 1253. If, go right ahead. Let's see. The selectman salary stay the same. I'd like to see that stay there for the next person coming in. They have to fill some pretty big shoes and do the job and be there like Barbara has 24 seven. And I think reducing the salary is kind of a slap in the face to whoever's coming in. They have to fill those shoes and do that job. And I think the money should stay the same. And the $3 million, I'd like to see that come down and come back to the townspeople a little bit, cut the taxes down, and not have such a big slush fund. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. And the next one I see is 860-384-1904. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. All set. Okay. Thanks very much. I believe that's everyone. Is there anyone who wished to speak who hasn't had the opportunity? Okay, um, at this point then I'm going to close the public comment section of this meeting. Thank you very much for uh, your thoughts, um, for caring enough about the town to spend some of your time with us. And uh, we're going to move on to the regular business of the meeting. Uh, from going forward, it's just going to be members uh, 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 or Barbara, Kim, people that uh, the chair calls on uh, who will be invited to speak. Um, again, thank you very much for your input. We appreciate it. Okay, Paul, since you are the man who uh, has a hard deadline at eight o'clock, um, what would you like to see covered in the half an hour or so that you're still going to be with us? I think uh, a couple of things. Um, first, I, I think having this input from the community is, is really terrific. And, you know, um, I think it would be very helpful perhaps if we could go over uh, with Barbara's help to have a better understanding of the degradation, I believe, of Wheeler, um, you know, the- uh, Weller. Weller, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, the, uh, the bridge situation. And maybe we should have a bit of a conversation about whether or not we might be wanting to bond some of this. Um, what are the costs? Um, 
we don't have to have all the answers this evening, but I think it'd be good to start off there because I think this will definitely impact our reserves of 3 million. Right. Um, and at the same time, I would still like very much to be able to achieve a return um, to our, our taxpayers um, to the extent we can figure out a way to do that uh, with, uh, without doing any harm. Okay. That sounds like a, a good plan, but uh, before we do that, I would like to make one comment. I did hear several people use the term slush fund. Um, what we have is not a slush fund. Um, it is a surplus. Uh, it is money that we can use in the event of emergencies, but like any of the town money, it can only be spent in specific ways in accordance with the budget that is passed uh, by the taxpayers at the annual meeting. Um, it's not something that uh, the town government <clears throat> can access willy nilly for um, other purposes. Uh, I just wanna be absolutely clear about that. Um, it's not just money in our back pocket that we can reach into and treat everyone to lunch. Um, so. Um, Barbara, what new numbers have you got for us this week? You're on mute. Barbara, you're muted. First Zoom meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First Zoom meeting. <laughs> Hollywood Squares. Um, you're right, it is not a slush fund. And second, um, the, the Board of Selectmen did propose a drop in the mill rate. But at the end of the day, it is totally up to the Board of Finance to set that. In the meantime, um, again, the Board of Finance has their own policy about how much money they would like set aside in case there is a disaster in the community. And maybe this Board of Finance can ratify what they think if it's two, two and a half, three months. Nowadays, you know, 90 days is not that long. Um, so, uh, you know, you have to take care of the school still that, you know, the teachers have to get paid. Things still go on and we can, you know, stay afloat with that. But also it takes one thing to come along and uh, that just blows you out of the water. And we just got that on Friday where the state came in and they do bridge inspections. And I can tell you that this administration has not neglected any bridge repairs at all. But Weller's Bridge, which we repaired the decking, et cetera, back in 2001, is now showing real signs on the underside of the decking. We also put uh, a bunch of money into that bridge to uh, repair the scour critical in 2011. Mm -hmm. However, so we did have that bridge looked at. And instead of we could do some repairs on it, but the state called me and said, we are going to uh, rate this bridge from fair to poor. And I said, what, you know, sent me some pictures. I was really surprised and uh, said, I said, is it gonna fall in tomorrow? What, you know, what are we gonna do here? And they said, no, but you really do need to start planning. So right away, me by myself, haven't been to the selectmen yet. I would, there, is fed, there are federal dollars and I would like to be able to start a grant to, it's gonna be a total bridge repair. That's what it's gonna be. And so, you, you know what? It could be up to $5 million. And any grants that come through the feds are 80, 20. So if it's 5 million, there's 1 million right there that we're gonna to have to put out. Um, we have money that we are trying and waiting on the state to give us for um, Davenport. Mm -hmm. We don't wanna spend our own money on that because I really believe we're gonna get it but they haven't come forward and awarded that. And that's over 700,000. It goes really quick. So uh, we do have some culverts in town that need to be addressed. And um, again, it's gonna be up to the people and the board of finance what they want. We are, drop, the, we are recommending the board of selectmen to drop the mill rate and maybe it can go down another half a mill. But I, for me, um, any more than that, it would not be prudent. Uh, but again, it is totally up to the Board of Finance. The other thing that um, Andy mentioned was the appeal for the, in the wetlands um, for the subdivision off of Route 199. Now that was a subdivision that went through what, two years, Andy? 
Oh, we've Brian been working on that more, more like three years in one iteration or another. I'm also on the Wetlands Commission. So, so there's, um, that is going to be a lot of money that we don't currently have budgeted in our, um, in this budget. Yeah. How much does Gail charge us an hour, Barbara? She gives us a discount rate. It's under, it's like 200 or under 180. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. It is right now, but it adds up quickly. What it is. And, but when somebody makes an appeal like this, one of the things that has to be done is like all of these meetings have to be transcribed. It's huge. And uh, there are, I, yeah, I'm not going to get hundreds of hours. I can win it or not, but it is going to be legal fees that are not budgeted. Is it going to be astronomical? No, but it's, it's not budgeted and I'm going to have to put it in there. Um, the other thing with more money that's in there, and Kim, you can speak to this, Kim Barron, you know, the money that the Board of Finance added to our budget last year because of COVID and we had so many unknowns, we've also gotten back that money through um, FEMA. And I mean, I have to compliment Kim Barron because she's done all the paperwork on these things. And now we're going to be awarded um, through the CARES Act some money, but they haven't come out on how we can spend it. They're looking to maybe allow it for infrastructure, and that would be great. Um, the other thing that was very prudent is that we have saved over the years our town aid road money. We've used it where we've had to, but we haven't used it all up. And uh, so we do have some money sitting there. Uh, but if I can use the state's money, I'd rather use the state's money. So we have Davenport, which we did a Band-Aid on, and it's gonna, it, it'll last another year, and it's going to have to if they don't award that uh, bridge to us in, during the month of May. We're going to miss the construction season, and so we may have to go back out to bid. And I don't know if it's going to be more or less. Um, I don't being more. Just more paperwork and uh, not knowing where it's going to end up. However, the Band-Aid that we spent money on, our own money, is this bridge is not gonna fall down the way it is right now. It'll make it through another winter. So, um, like I said, 3 million might sound like a lot, but uh, if you're gonna add two and a half, maybe three months of money that's set aside so that we can get through anything. Um, you know, if a tornado came through and wiped out the town hall, a million dollars is not a whole lot of money. And like I said, if we can get that grant from the federal government and just say it is five million. If it's, they're looking at a total bridge replacement, which I just cannot believe either, because we spent so much money on this bridge already. But we spent a lot of money on minor bridge, and we, we are looking at that to do some uh, minor repairs underneath the decking. Mm -hmm. So, um, and again, mm -hmm. culverts are something that we do need to replace, uh, and you got to look at Botsford Hill. That's another one. And we're waiting on that to see if we're going to get a grant. The problem is, is if you start spending money on some of these bridges, um, you will not get the money from the grant. Barbara, could you also, since we're sort of going through these, uh, you or Kim give people a sense of the swings that we go um, with the, the money we pay to the school board and how this that can go from a plus... 300,000 yeah. to a minus 300,000. Sure. Could you sure. talk? About I mean, uh, you know, before this year, they were looking to combine the grades in the elementary school here. And then, um, you know, COVID hit. Right before that, though, the superintendent decided she was not going to combine the classes. And it was a good move because during COVID, we had an influx of people. We had 17 kids come into a booth free school in one year. And that's why we're paying more of the school budget. Our proportion went up higher than it, faster than anybody else, the other two towns. So, um, you know, here we are one week, we have no, we don't have any kids in the school and the next couple of months, you know, we're full. And that, could I add to that? Crazy. Hmm? Could I add to that? Um, that's the sort of um, expense that, it, we find where we find it valuable to have the uh, surplus yeah. so that we can keep um, the burden on the taxpayers, the current burden on the taxpayers um, more constant. So that we're not, if we get a year like this, where all of a sudden our bill from region 12 is up substantially, uh, I believe $600,000 over last year. 
Um, in the past, we've used money from the surplus uh, to buy that down so that the mill rate could stay more or less constant. Um, you know, I to keep in mind, I don't like paying constant. taxes any more than anyone else does, but we have one of the lowest mill rates in the state of Connecticut, um, fourth or fifth lowest, I believe. I think if you drop the mill rate, um, you know, a mill, two mills, which it would allow you to do, and then you've used up your surplus, and then you're hit with something the following year, people are going to be screaming mm -hmm. over the tax increase that they're going to get hit with. Yeah. So again, it's, if we didn't have, if we knew that we were not going to face some, something like a bridge repair or something like that, I would say more, absolutely. But now that we have some of this information and the legal fees that we don't know how long that's going to go or get dragged out, um, you know, we did come down. We, we did, but it's, uh, it's again, at the end of all of this, you're going to see how much you have and, and what's projected and you can decide then. It's 100% sure. the Board of Finance. Okay, so let's... Uh look at the changes in the numbers uh, from what we had last week. Um, Barbara, do you want to go through them specifically? And uh, we can talk about uh, uh, certainly some of the personnel we can jump right into. Um, and I would kind of like to take a vote at least. And your current salary is 82, right? Two, three, yeah. I don't... 83? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. I have, a, I have a question while we're speaking about that. Since the budget starts on July 1st, does that mean that Barbara's salary is going to go down yeah, on July 1st? No, but it's whatever you choose here, those two salaries are going to go in and they're going to be prorated according to the months of service. Yes, they're already prorated. This is Kim Barron. And the, and the current salary are in this line and they are prorated to be the 80 takes over November 17th. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And uh, go ahead, Barbara, you want to walk us through the other? Uh... You know, I mean, I'm just putting numbers in, yep, for yep. the uh, finance director. It was bumped. I mean, the numbers are all there in front of you. Mm -hmm. I, that, that's, those are the only things that were changed. But I can tell you that, um, and which obviously changed the FICA and the Medicare um, and the pension lines. Mm -hmm. So the finance director is 52, the tax collector is 4,500, the assessor mm -hmm. is 4,500, the, but there's another um, 20 in there for a, an assistant. Um, or 18, I'm sorry. The town hall hourly is 29.6. To tell you that, um, I think we're gonna have to raise the legal fees or just know that at the end of the year, you're gonna have to go into contingency to pay that. Mm -hmm. And if there's nothing else in contingency, that's fine. We are looking at a, we are looking at a good year here because of the Amer the uh, CARES Act and the money that we're going to be getting there. Yeah, yeah, I am concerned about the legal fees um, because I have direct personal experience with um, this issue, and um, I've seen the amount of money that's been spent on experts and attorneys already. Um, yeah. And it isn't just the attorneys, it's the, uh, you know, the, 
the legal experts uh, who would be called upon, the, the uh, wetlands experts, the uh, soil scientists, the engineers who were called to testify. Um, those folks are not cheap either. Mm -hmm. um, and they have already put in, um, there's been a lot of money spent on experts in the past two years on this development. Um, and I wouldn't be, I'd be surprised to see if um, those demands lessened during the course of a lawsuit. Well, what would be great if um, the town wins and part of that was that the, the loser would have to pay for the town's legal fees and all their experts. Yeah, that, that would be good. Um, I'm not counting on that. No, but it needs to be asked for. Yeah, for sure. And I will tell you that for many years, we just kept the legal fees, which are, you know, legal fees to cover anything with the selectmen, all the departments, collect tax collector, the assessor, the building department, and all the different commissions. It was around, you know, $25,000 $25, um, over the years. And then we bumped it to 30,000. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a, it's just like buying salt every year. We kept that at, at, at the same cost because you didn't know what the snow was going to be like. So the, what the weather was going to be like and the snow budget. So some years we didn't get snow and we made out well, some years we got it and we were over budget, but we kept a, it a constant number. And that's what we've done with the legal fees. So in during those years this year, <laughs> During those years, Barbara, how many times has the town been sued? None that I know of. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's, I think our, our normal $30,000 legal budget is a starting point for this year. I don't think that it's. Um, no, I, said, I don't think it's gonna work, but you can decide whether you do wanna up that line the bottom line, you don't even have to throw it all into inland wetlands mm -hmm. or know that you're gonna have to go to contingency to get it or you are gonna have to go back to the town to get it. Yeah. I would I would argue for contingency. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't wanna see the wetlands line increase to show our hand. Um, and you know, remember the other side is, um, is gonna be spending heavily too. That doesn't Correct. seem to be an issue. Oh, is that right? Hmm. Um, but, you know, that's conjecture. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know that. Um, well, and, and, and unfortunately, um, because we're just at the beginning of the lawsuit, as I understand it, um, it's very hard to know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think I agree with Paul to put some you know, educated guess amount of money into get into contingency and, you know, hope we don't have to spend it. Okay. Yeah. We can always pull it back. It's true. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's there. Just like the COVID money. Same thing. Just have that reserve. Mm -hmm. I agree. Right. Yeah. Well, the, um, and you usually, we, uh, what did we budget this year, Kim? Thirty-three thousand in contingency, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's back down to thirty-three. We had a hundred and thirty-three thousand in there. The board of finance added a hundred grand for any for oh. COVID, which we came out really well with. So yeah, yeah, we didn't need it. So that's good. It's unknowns, and so with that right you can go to contingency and if it's if contingency is not enough which i don't think that's going to be the case then you go back to the town and what do you where do you take that you take it from the surplus right okay okay um i'm fine with that approach um, so the the other thing is that i the only thing other i would add is um surveyors and engineers that's another thing that we have just kept a little bit of money in there, $5,000. Um, I can tell you that the board of selectmen um, hired Cardinal Engineering and to look at our bridges and um, I don't know how to say this, but he, they were given just a, a sh six bridges to look at and um, come up with an assessment 
I really believe that we need to do them all. And, um, and the culverts, some of the culverts, because this is going to be a book. And I've talked about this before with the Board of Finance. And it's going to be a manual that is gonna say, okay, these are your bridges. And I have this in 15 years, or this one's gonna last 25 years. We don't have that book and we need it. Yes. I mm -hmm. believe we have to put some money in there. The thing is, is that for example, with Davenport, we, we spent a little bit of money, but if, when we get the grant, the grant will pay for this, but we have to, we have to get money. It, it, the grant will pay for the engineer, but this manual is important. I really believe it. And I've talked about it and uh, it's not complete. And it needs to be. Um, okay, I would like to, because of uh, time constraints, um, I believe Paul is probably most concerned with the issue of the first selectman salary going forward. Yeah. Um, can we have a, a motion about that particular wine item? Um, does anyone care to make a motion about what we should do with that uh, wine item? I'm delighted to move that we maintain the current salary that Barbara is receiving for the incoming first selectman, whoever that may be. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? I just want to, so the number that's in there is not it. So we're taking we that understand up. that. Okay. Yeah, we'll take it up. I'm just, I want to make sure I understand. Yep. Yeah. So we have to change it. Okay. Um, does anyone need to recuse themselves from this uh, particular question? Okay. Yes, Andy, I'd like to recuse myself from this question. Thank you, Patrick. Um, is there any discussion? All those in favor of keeping the first selectman salary at its current level for the incoming first selectman, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions other than Patrick? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, Paul, were there other issues that you would like to see addressed before you have to go? Um, no, I think that, you know, we've, we've gone through the contingency issues. I think now those who are still listening on the call have a better sense from Barbara after we learned about Weller's Bridge, uh, which really did come as a bit of a shock on Friday. Um, so I'm satisfied with, with what we've discussed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I have a John? question, if I may. Andy. Please. Uh, did we get a full report on all the bridges they inspected from the state? Not yet. Not yet. I know that they. I know they looked at Miners Bridge. I don't know if you've got a report on that yet. No. And the, and I didn't really get a full. Full. The gentleman from the state called me and said, I just want you to know that we are dropping this bridge from fair to poor. And I said, please send me these pictures and please, you know, tell me your report. He said it wasn't ready, but gave me a little. Yeah. Thick. So it will come in from about a lot of, a lot of the bridges. Going forward, we really need to, um, the, the incoming first selectman, I think, really needs to take your um, manual idea seriously. And that's been 20 years, and we're looking at something like a full replacement on Weller's Bridge. Um, that's something that we should be uh, either willing to... Uh, it's not going to be just one bridge and it's not, oh, I know. Be, and so yeah, you know what? It's just one example. It has been uh, debt free for quite a while yeah. and we have been a pay as you go, but it is time to spread that kind of, uh, those kinds of expenses that we're going to have to replace some culverts, et cetera. <laughs> it needs to be spread out. It's only fair. It's not fair to just hit everybody right now. It could be taken out over 15 years the life of whatever. Right. That's, that's something that's, that's that we you, need. Up to you. Yeah. Well, how we, how we pay for it is up to us, but what needs to be paid for is something that 
the executive side of the table needs to, uh, or the board of selectmen uh, uh, and the first selectmen uh, need to provide us the information on, and you know that, but. Um, yeah, I do know that. Yeah. And you've been doing a great job so far. It's just that it's, it's grown at the end of your term through no fault of your own. Um, okay, what other issues? We have uh, some town hall uh, um, increases that we discussed last week uh, that we're gonna discuss uh, out in the uh, bright air. Um, for example, the uh, finance director, um, we uh, were talking about adding to her salary. Um, let's go through that and uh, explain the reasons why. One of which, let me back up a little bit and give some perspective here. We have um, a great team at Town Hall who makes things, who manages things, makes the town run well. Um, and I think particularly during this upcoming transition to whoever becomes first selectman after Barbara, um, we need those team members in place um, and um, not going anywhere else uh, so that uh, the transition is smooth and Roxbury continues to run as well as it has been run. Um, so with my perspective out there, um, Barbara, would you walk us through the numbers, please? Okay, we're going to change the first selectman salary. So, also, what 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 are you uh, proposing for the select men? The board. Well, those guys, I don't know, three four thousand a year sounds about right. No, um, I believe we had talked about uh, increasing that to six thousand a year. Uh, it's five thousand now. Am I correct? No, no, I'm wrong. Like seven. It's seven now. And the, the, the recommendation was to have any new incoming selectmen be six. No, I, I well, okay. Um, Andy. Is there a motion? What about if we just follow the precedent we just set um, and keep everybody the same? I, yeah, I think so. Paul, are you leaving? Maybe. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm fine with that. I, you mm -hmm. know, the, the job is what it is. Um, and I don't think that we should be um, differentiating in that manner, um, but that's my opinion. Um, what's the rest of the board think? I agree with you. Agree. Yeah, agree. Um, so we would like to keep that, um, the selectmen salaries at their current level for all of the selectmen, is that correct? Correct. Yes, yes. Okay. I don't think we need to vote on that specifically. That'll be part of the, the budget that we recommend then. Uh, I just wanted to be sure that Paul had an opportunity to vote on that one specific item that I knew was important to him. Um, okay. So yep, the, uh, so the finance director. Now, and some people may look at that salary and you know what, it's, it's, it's hard and we you really shouldn't be looking at the person, but it is the job. And so, the finance director is also the treasurer, and when they look at that combined salary, it, it, you know it's it's our it's like sixty, and uh, but one of them is an elected position, and that could go by the wayside. You never know how things are going to work. The treasurers, but the I've I've worked with the finance director, and um, this pay scale of forty five really needs to be increased. And so we had talked about it and um, in your last meeting and 52 is where it landed. I think that's fair. I, you know what, when I walk out of here, you're going to need the history, um, the experience, um, the integrity, the honesty, all of that in this office. And so uh, that's where it landed at 52. For the for the year. I think that's fair. It could be more, but I think that's fair. What's, um, uh, what are, what's the take of the members of the Board of Finance on this? I agree with that. I agree. I agree. Agreed. We need the institutional history at a minimum. Mm -hmm. It's not, and it's also not, full-time here is 35 uh, hours. 
You um, I can you. tell you these two offices don't work 35 hours. They work a lot more than that. So um, the tax collector salary, it was uh, being bumped from actually the, originally there was 40 in there. Wow. Saying the same kind of thing, you know, I mean, it is considered a part-time position. The hours are going to be raised to 25 hours a week and um, just added a little bit more. Um, the collection rate, the honesty, the integrity, um, just the work ethic, everything. Uh, the, the town, you know, we haven't increased a lot of, uh, you what do I want to say? You know, levels deep in these offices, everybody is it, you know? And so they, yep. Well, they've been here a while and maybe that's a problem in that the salaries continue to go up, but it's not a problem when you really want to know that you can depend on people. So anyway, but that was going to be the 40,500, the same thing with the assessor. And even though that salary line shows a lot more, we are going to uh, bring someone else into that office who eventually may take over the assessor's job. And so at some point in time, the assessor will switch places with this person and um, uh, be a, the person that we have in mind is already a fully certified assessor in another town. Could you speak to that a little bit, Barbara, both the, in terms of the tax collector, the tax assessor, what certifications are required and how common are they to find? Well, they're both positions um, should be certified. I'm sure there are towns that don't have them certified, uh, but uh, we're very fortunate in that case. And they have to keep up their certifications. And I, Kim, I think Kim Pakripka can speak that they just added hours to the tax collector, uh, what they have to go through for um, education. But, uh, the, and the assessors, you know, you're gonna find more and more regional Assessors, we already are regionalized in that our assessor works in an, in Warren and uh, actually had worked in three towns. Um, so we are getting a clerk to come in and and help that she can explain so that the, the person that we're bringing on is also working in multiple towns. So these are part-time jobs, but they're not part-time. They are, you know, work a lot of hours at home, from home, et cetera. So anyway, that was that. Okay, I'm, I, I, I wanna keep that this. Line, that line shows more, but it, it has um, it has the, the new person that's gonna be coming in also. I wanna give the Board of Finance the opportunity to comment question on each of these as we go through um, so that we don't get bogged down at the end. Um, Thoughts, comments, questions from the board? Um, I personally think that uh, most of the changes are pretty nominal. We're only talking all these things total 16,700. It's not a, a huge amount. And I think uh, there was a lot of thought that our finance board did into this and I'm, uh, I'm pretty supportive of it. Sounds fantastic. Anyone else on the board have questions or comments? I agree with Patrick 100%. I think we're uh, very lucky to have these people working for the town of Roxbury. Um, and I, I just, I agree with, with, uh, with what's being thought. As well. Okay. Me too. Okay, um, moving on. The town hall is the IT. Uh, part of this position, the hourly is in there. And um, it's just, you know, what, what that has evolved into from what it was, what it originally was. And um, uh, you had someone here speaking to it. Right. Um. But also, I mean, it's something that is constantly evolving. For example, you know, we have a mandate now that we're gonna to have to have these cameras for our police. Well, you also have to be able to save this, save these tapes for so much, so much, so much time. And um, they're still going through exactly what we have to do, but they do know that we have to purchase them. And we do have to save everything for a certain amount of time. And it's a whole new technology. So the person in this position has got to keep up with 
that kind of thing. There's new technology coming into this town hall right now with some of the things that you all agreed and we went to town meeting to get the money for. Um, you know, we have security upgrades. We have our um, trying to get our software and our hardware, you know, just again, so that we are not we are not hiring more and more people to do a job. We're giving people the efficiencies that they need to do their job. Yeah. And that's how I have always operated. And as soon as I got in here, we upgraded everybody's computer, everything so that they had what they um, needed. And when this COVID hit, people were working from home and uh, we don't know where that's going. You know, it all worked out. I don't think anybody slipped up to where the public complained. I never got any complaints. And so we're hoping that, but people did come back into this town hall and we've been here since July, even though the town hall is uh, closed to the public, it is open by appointments. The, the people that work here have been here. Uh, some people think that we're all working from home and that is not true. That's only the state. So, um, so um, anyway, this is what the number to put, put in there, 29664. Uh, Jimmy Hurlberg uh, sent um, an uh, appeal, a letter um, to the Board of Finance uh, regarding his duties, uh, his expanded duties um, as the IT person for the town hall. Uh, we did cover this uh, to some degree in executive session last week, but um, it, his uh, comments are now a matter of public record uh, because he uh, emailed it to us. Jim, would you care to comment on uh, uh, for the public uh, uh, more about what you had to say, what your how your duties have expanded? I think Barbara kind of touched on it. It's just it's a lot. Everything's a lot more technologically advanced. I mean, you know what? You got to be you got to be ready for the the people that are the young the younger crowd. They want everything online. Um, you know, they want everything. They want everything online. They want to see all of the ordinances, which are not updated. But that's one of our projects that Jimmy and I are also going to be working on with Peter. And I mean, we did start it, but um, again, the evolving technology and the software. We're trying to get things so that it's easier for the public to access information. And um, in land use, it's going to be land use. It's going to be the town clerk. It's going to be this office, hopefully, and uh, with the assessor. That's one of them. But the other thing is huge, and it's security, which is a big, a big thing that we need to stay up on. And we do have some, um, the way that we operate in here with our security, but it's going to be upgraded, and it you know cameras and and locked doors it's going to be a, it's going to bring us in we have to keep evolving you have to keep changing and evolving to what is um in the best interest of everybody and their safety jimmy um i'm gonna guess that you don't work a 35 hour week either um i, I do oh, oh it's I, know, I know your schedule yeah. for a 35 hour week i'm guessing that you're 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 probably working more than that i'm i'm on call if anybody needs me for anything mm -hmm. and they know it. So yeah, sometimes. I have his number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he's come in, he's come in on Sundays. Maybe he's, you know, you might find him out on the golf course once or twice during the summer, but I know that he comes back in here. Is there cell service on the golf course? <laughs> Not great. We got to improve that. I'm also kind of the tech guy up there. So <laughs> we're working on it. But he will, I'll come in on a Sunday or a Monday or uh, not, uh, not a Monday or a Sunday or a Saturday, or he'll come in at night um, during the week. And uh, it's, it's a, it's just evolved so much just in the last two or three years. Yeah. You can't do anything anymore. Nothing's on paper or pen. You have to email, you have to scan. Yeah. And everything has to work together. So it's, it's, a constant battle of <laughs> fixing and tweaking and updating and upgrading. So, um, does anyone on the board have questions or comments uh, for uh, Jimmy or Barbara on this matter? I think in your letter, Jim, you, you talked about consulting um, and what that would cost us in the event that uh, 
we had to call in outside people to solve problems that you take care of on a daily basis. And I think those numbers, I think you said anywhere from 70 to $200 an hour, depending on who and what. <clears throat> and we haven't, how many, how much, uh, how many consultants have we actually used in the last couple of years? You know, we have, I have somebody kind of above me, quality data, you know, can help with the, the more server aspects of stuff. But other than them, nobody. I, I, I sit through all the webinars. I talk with the people that are going to be using the programs, get their opinions, get their feelings. And you have, you have direct um, contact with the folks that are selling us this stuff as well. Yep. You're the interface. Um, yeah, so I, I can so take, you, I so take that know, away. If, if I got a problem, I call you. Yep. And, and, and nobody else but you is going to call them to figure it out. Nope. Because <laughs> there isn't anybody else who knows how to ask the question. Yeah. I mean, they're able to, to call some of our support lines, but it would, it would take twice as long, three times as long. I have a good rapport with the people we do have to call. And uh, I think it works well. And downtime is at a minimal and upgrades go as efficiently as they can in, uh, in government. <laughs> okay, Jimmy, thank you. Um, anyone else? Well, it, we did, we had, we had companies that we dealt with. I think I told you the story of the first time that uh, when, when Jimmy came in, I was like, you know what, you could be our IT person and you're coming with me to meet these people and we're gonna talk to them about how they're gonna service us and um, how we're going to use the cloud. All of that was just coming in, and and uh, you know, I threw some classes out and said, Jimmy, you know, maybe you can go through these. And anyway, we ended up hiring these people, and we had them for several years. We we jumped around, had some other people, but um, it's pretty nice having somebody in house. Thank you. Do you remember what we were paying those people back, uh, I don't know, three, four years ago, five years ago? Yeah. I'd, I'd be really impressed if you could. <laughs> Kim Barron, do you remember we paid like total communications? We paid. Um... It was Mark, Lightning PC, total. We had I mean, annually total communications, what we used yeah. to pay them? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Maybe it was about 20 grand, between 15 and 20 a year. Okay. And that was with me here as well. Yeah. Helping out, you know, not as an official role, but, you know, the printer breaks, I can reinstall that. You don't have to bother them. Okay. Yeah, but it's, it's like, it's, it's every time you call them. Yeah. You it's know. True. But particularly with total communication, you were on the clock with them, you know, any, anything, it was kind of a retainer <clears throat> right, okay. that we paid them. Have we got anything more on, uh, on this particular matter? Anyone else? Yeah, yeah Jim, uh, thank you very much for the letter uh, and reading it. Would it be fair to say that you almost acted as a concierge for the town employees between um, the IT people and and basically getting things fixed in a timely manner? Ab absolutely. I, I think if you ask, I mean, your wife, but anybody, they know my door's open, they can text or call me, and I just want to get them back up and, and running. I don't, I don't, that's my only priority. <laughs> yeah, that was the impression I got from, from your letter, so thank you for that. Thank you. All right. Um... I think we can move on from this matter. If anyone disagrees, let me know. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, what other uh, new items have we got, Barbara? Nothing. Um, new items. I mean, if there was a way to put money into that surveyors line i mean at least bring it up to ten thousand from five i think that that would be a, a good thing and then we make the changes and then we can give it to you 
uh, Kim, we can get it this week, right? Yep. Back to them. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a bad idea. I mean, I know having hired surveyors that $5,000 doesn't get you a lot. Um, no, but if we can access grants, these grants <laughs> for that. So, but if, you know, it's just something to pull some money from. Well, is the surveyor portion of that something that we have to do uh, before we apply for a grant? Um, is it something that, you know, sure. can be I need used the to leverage? I need the information to put in the, uh, you know, I need the specifics. Yes. Um, to put That's into the grant. I just not good enough to just make it up. <laughs> we have to spend some money to apply for some money. Right. Mm -hmm. Barbara, is um, some of what the state is going to give you, um, will some of that take the place of the manual that you're looking to do? Um, I, I, I can't tell if they're the same thing or not. Oh. First of all, the state comes in and they will look at uh, your large bridges and they have over the years, but in the, they'll make a recommendation that maybe you should look at this. So for example, the scour critical, which is where the bridge abutments go into the water on Weller's Bridge. And we were having a lot of storms, et cetera. So, a lot of storms and the water was rushing for several years. And so they said, this is just eating away from all the soil at the base of this, where, you know what, you better check because this bridge could be rocking in the next storm. So that's the scour critical. And we had someone come in and um, do some work there. And unfortunately now we have a big like island going out to the right side where all of that work was done. So it would stop eating away at the concrete piers. So, and um, I forgot where I was going with this. So they made a recommendation, but they're not giving us any information. Oh, because I, I thought I heard you say that they come in with a big thick. Oh, but yeah, because it's so many of the bridges. Okay. It's the bridges. So, so they're not redundant. No. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm satisfied with the changes that we've uh, we've made to the budget. I know we've increased it. That's not something that the Board of Finance normally does, um, normally, normally likes to do. Um, in these cases, I think that it's money well spent. Um, but I think we also need to look at the, uh, the mill rates and um, the amount of money that we have uh, sitting in the uh, in the surplus and see what we can do. Um, I would like to at least keep the mill rate flat. If we could bring it down some, I would like to do that as well. I would prefer to do that. Um, but my take is that three million dollars is not um, an absurd amount of money for Roxbury to have. It sounds like a lot of money, um, but when you start talking about construction projects. Um, <laughs> It was fairly um, quick. It goes really quick, especially at, in, at this moment where um, Patrick can certainly speak to um, the increase in the cost of construction uh, materials Absolutely. in the past year. Andy, yep. I, have, I have a suggestion because um, yep. I think it was a really healthy conversation we, we had about the um, slush fund yep. and um, I, I would like to suggest that at the public here at the public hearing and then maybe a town meeting that you do a brief presentation about what the two million is, why we hold the two million, mm -hmm. what it does in terms of our position with uh, bond raiders, why we keep the two million, what some of the vagaries are for the reasons that we, we try to keep another, it just just a sense of the process that we go through yeah. every year to say we want to retain this we at the same time just I, I think people don't necessarily have a full understanding of that of of all of the components that go into that three million dollars that that's a great suggestion and it isn't as we all know it's not an arbitrary number it's not no, something no. that we um just say well we ought to have 
$3 million in the bank. Um, it's I think we do say we might... have $2 million in the bank. Three. Yeah, well, yeah, we have normally 2 million is what we're, that's what the minimum that we're happy with. Right, the, the, and then the other safe. million is what people get a little um, yeah. unclear about, I think. Right, and it, you know, we have, we're audited every year. Where we have an auditor that comes in, Charles Haven and Company, um, looks over our books, uh, compares what we do to uh, state law, um, and has the uh, perspective of auditing. Uh, I'm not sure how many other governmental bodies that they uh, they audit. I know they do Region 12. They do uh, any number of uh, other local towns. Um, so he brings a perspective that we don't have um, just sitting here. You know, the, the six of us in this little board. Um, Andy, and can I add a little bit to Nanette's uh, comment? Please. Um, so according to my calculations, we are within 20 to 25% of the budget in this unassigned fund balance, mm -hmm. um, which falls right within the state guidelines. I actually went to a, a seminar um, a couple of years ago, and that's, that's exactly what the state wants all the towns to be at. So we're right there. Mm -hmm. And just to... Um, comment on a gentleman's uh, question earlier during the um, public statement um, earlier on. The uh, Bridgewater, within the last year or two, it has about a 47% um, unassigned fund balance of their budget. Mm -hmm. so they're, they're twice as much as we are. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. That's good for perspective. Thank you. There sure is. Mm -hmm. yep, welcome. But before, can I, and that is true. Um, but what I wanted to just mention, though, the other thing that I would like to see added, because it happened afterwards, is on the um, capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. Put minor, um, I'm sorry, Weller's Bridge on there as a project, and I mean, you could put anything in there. You could have fifty thousand in there as a placeholder. I just want to make sure that it gets approved as a project. At the t it has to go to town meeting, and instead of going back, it would be um, approved. Does that affect, um, I don't think it does, but I just want to be clear, um, our abilities to apply for a grant, having some money set aside doesn't, but if we spent money, we're done. Is that correct? The local, the local bridge program works that way. Yep. Okay. Um, so, but but it, it, what it is is it's putting it in as a project that the town knows about yep and they're they're saying yep we know about it and we know we got to fix it so it, it should be in our long-term local capital improvement plan how we get the money we don't have to decide that right now but we do need to do we do, do need to address it as a project so i, I would that's... like to add that to the local uh, capital improvement plan before the annual meeting so that it gets approved as a project that we need to do. I think that's prudent. I, I have another um, thought um, with regard to uh, what, uh, following up on Nanette in terms of what you're gonna be talking about at the, uh, the annual meeting. Um, it might be helpful to look at what the median price house in Roxbury, mm. how it would be affected by changes in the mill rate. Mm -hmm. I believe I've read, and I can't, I don't know, that the, um, the median house, that is half the houses are below this price and half are above it, is about $544,000. And when you start looking at what a mill or 10 mills means to that taxpayer, it's not a huge amount of money. After you, after you, 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 know, you have a 70% assessment of that, it's $370,000. Uh, and apply the mill rate, start playing around with it a little bit. You, you wanna be thoughtful about what you're actually delivering to the, uh, to the taxpayer and what the, relative value, what the relative value is and what the relative town and the relative cost is to someone who's at the median or below the median. Mm -hmm. And I think the commentary about the grand list, the grand list is growing because of, of more expensive homes being sold in town. It's being pulled up, not. Uh, and uh, and it's being pulled up across the board, but um, for the folks that are in the lower end of the median, 
um, the impact is not as obviously as severe as it would be for someone who's at the upper end of uh, the home values in the town. Just, just give me, it, it gives the taxpayer an idea of what you're talking about in terms of dollars and cents to them. Yeah, at 15 mils, you know, a house assessed at, you know, $550,000, the median that you said. That's the median, that's the median price of the house, not the median assessed valuation. Right, the median, so take it down to 400,000 as the median assessed value, just to make the sure. math Number easy. Season. Um, so you're looking at six thousand dollars in taxes uh, at fifteen mills on four thousand. Am I am I doing that right? Yes, I thought so. Yeah. Um, so um, so one mill it. at that point is worth. I'd have to get a calculator. One fifteenth. Yeah. So it's you know it adds up. Um, I'm not one to go throwing that money around myself. Um, no way. But um, it's it's a good idea to have an idea of what mill one mill actually means uh, to each person. So it's four hundred dollars in that. In there, it was a four hundred dollar increase. And so yeah, for that house, it would be a four hundred dollar for that mill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, starting to fill on six thousand dollars. On six thousand dollars. Yeah. On that six thousand dollars, yeah. yeah. It's going off that median. Yeah. I think it's a helpful number to have. We, yeah. we throw yeah. mills around and we should be talking dollars to real dollars to, to, to taxpayers. Yeah. Right, because a mill means something different to everybody, everybody. in the town. Yeah. Um, um, okay, what else are we gonna cover tonight? Uh, I do want to add, I, I agree that we should add um, Minor bridge. Minor bridge as no, a no, project. No, no, no. Wellers, Wellers Bridge. Wellers Bridge. I've lived here 20 some years and I can, <laughs> so, which one is that? Um, Wellers Bridge as a project. Um, how much money do we want to uh, put in there to get that uh, started? Um, um, Barbara well, suggested. Go ahead. Well, like Patrick said, with uh, with the in, well, the increases will go a little <coughs> bit more. Uh, all the increases so far are going to be under. It's going to be under twenty thousand from the previous meeting, mm -hmm. and um, so me personally, I do think that I would like to see the mill rate dropped. I don't know that you're going to be able to drop it as low. I didn't hear what some people were thinking. Uh, but uh, certainly to what we came up with was 15.75. And so Kim, what do you yeah. think we should add in here as a placeholder for, for Weller's Bridge? We didn't even talk about this today. We should have. Kim Barron. Yeah, I, I really don't have a good handle on it right now, a, a, a minimal amount. <clears throat> Because we just don't know what we're we know what we're facing long term, but uh, so right. are we thinking? Twenty thousand. Yeah, ten, maybe ten thousand, twenty thousand. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. Just to put no. it on the on paper, basically. Yeah. yeah. Andy, thing, Andy, this is Russ. Can I speak, or is this just just no, the speak. commission? Go ahead, Russ. Um, I I went and looked at it today. And as you know, um, sorry, I'm all dark here. Forget it. Um, the Brits isn't as bad as a poor rating may indicate. It, it indicates we need to be aware of some rust at the, ju at the just joints, uh, other things. I really did my own inspection. Maybe a lot of people on this call don't know that. Um, you know, I work for a big engineering firm and I have a lot of experience with this, although I'm not an engineer, don't pretend to be, but I am a drainage expert and I've been around this long enough to know. So we, we have time. It's not like the bridge is going to fall in tomorrow. I was kind of surprised when I saw the poor rating because we did so much work on this bridge not too long ago. Um, and, you, you know, there's a big island in front of it that we removed a lot of years ago at the 
request of the DOT or the recommendation of DOT, and it's come back. And I don't see how that island was ever a problem because um, it, it's not really causing the problem to the bridge. The understructure is old, as we know. We have time and we should probably, um, I, I would say, talking to engineers that I work with, we should probably start budgeting at least $30,000 a year to fix this bridge. And, but we have at least 10 years. Now we know that in 10 years, the cost of um, this stuff may go way up. I mean, look at the cost of wood today for Cornell. Sure. Uh, but um, I, I think we do need to save for it. We can't pay for it all at once. And I encourage Barbara to look for that federal funding you were talking about. Now, if the federal funding came through, we, we would be up for 20%, but uh, we would have a 10 year time period to pay that. So um, I, I'm looking at this as a, as a $3 million um, bridge replacement right now, based on what I see. Um, so it's, it's, it's not a 20 million, it's not a I-95, but um, that's up to you. That, that's my two cents. It's, it's not as bad as, I, I'm kind of surprised they dropped the rating, but, but it's better for us to plan. Right. Russ, thank you. That's exactly the perspective I was gonna ask about. I was curious about um, whether the state had any kind of a time frame in mind um, yeah, they no, they I asked, did, did, you know, is it going to fall in tomorrow? No, but you do have to start planning for this bridge. So if we did apply um, for this grant and got it, then uh, it's time to take care of it. Yeah. You know, instead of waiting, um, you could spend two, three hundred thousand on a band aid. And I don't know how long that's going to take you, but. Any, any of those reports, Nanette, like you were asking, we've had an engineer go out and say, you know, what's the story with this? For example, they did, they gave us a bad report on Judd's bridge and we totally redid that bridge. And, um, you know, the, the, the side abutments there are on rock. And we said, we're going to disagree with you on this. And we hired somebody to verify it. So, yeah. But uh, they called. They don't usually call, and it just said we're we're rating this bridge poor. So okay, we're gonna well, we're gonna look at it and and go from there. But it didn't mean that we were gonna have to pay for it right now, and that's why I asked for a placeholder um, in the right. capital improvement. So I think we should go ahead and, and create a project um, for um, Weller's Bridge. What's the pleasure of the Board of Finance? How much do you think we should put in there this uh, this go round? I think Russ just made a pretty good suggestion. Yeah, uh, I, I tend to like to listen to experts. <laughs> yeah, All right, well, thirty. I'm not an expert. <laughs> You're more of an expert at this than any of anyone else <laughs> in right. this uh, Russ, meeting. You, but uh, you've got the most informed opinion here. There we go. Thank you. Um, I think it's good to plan. So I'm fine with that. Okay. And also with all of those additions, I, I, I just personally, I do hope that uh, the Board of Finance can see to drop the mill rate a little bit at least. Mm -hmm. I do agree with, you know what, um, the townspeople can certainly use it. Our, if you look at the revenue projection, you can see that, yes, our grand list went up, but you're looking at the only increase in revenue is $66,000 in that. So this next year, it probably will go up higher because mm -hmm. of all the building that we're having. Right. But, um, that doesn't apply to this budget. No. Barbara, have you talked to Gail about this wetlands appeal? I, I hear 50, 60,000. You know better than I do then. And I, well, the expenses, everything has to be transcribed I know, I from day that. one because they put in the denial portion. Um, that, so it goes back years. And every meeting, we, we've had 41 meetings. Everything has to be transcribed. 
that's going to be very expensive to the town. Yeah. I, I think we should budget 50000 for that. I really do. But confirm with Gail. Um, well, we, we did t um, touch on it a little bit before you got on, Russ. And um, it was, you know what? We can raise the money in the legal line or we can go to um, contingency at the end of the year or we go back to the town and say we need this money. So it's not like it has to be budgeted. Um, but I, that's totally up to, to all did of you. She, I did, did not she, get a number from her. She didn't, huh? That, that's what I'm getting from my lawyer friends based on their experience with these kinds so of if we were going to increase um, the legal line, which is now at 30. Mm -hmm. And um, what's nice about it is that you just the bottom line can't go over. But some of the some of the, the, the uh, commissions, et cetera, that we budget money for, they don't use it. So if you wanted to add another 20 into, I mean, you could put it in wetlands. However, Paul Healy said he would rather go back afterwards and so that you're not looking at, oh, they're, they're, they're beefing up their budget because they know they're going to have to pay. So, I agree. I agree. I'm not sure that Paul's right about that. Anybody in the legal profession um, is, is going to look at the, the merits of this, what's likely to happen. And our reaction isn't, I don't think going to um, guide the, the plaintiff uh, very much. Um, in fact, I think the more money we put in there, the scarier we would appear. Um, but I don't want to advocate spending money unnecessarily either. Um, well, we're very yeah, lucky yeah. in this town to have Gail. Gail is awesome. I, I know we're going to prevail because I, I know we did the right thing. Uh, and Gail is the best attorney we could have supporting us. But it is going to be expensive, not so much because of Gail, because of transcribing all those minutes from all those meetings is going to be a lot of money. So we have... Andy, I thought we were leaning towards putting it into contingency. We were leaning towards putting it into contingency. And I don't think that's a bad idea because that makes no. it available for other uses. Other should. uses. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I think that part add, of it's a good idea. Add another 10 or 20 to contingency. It's at 30 or 33. What did we put in there? 33. Yeah. I mean, I think it is responsible to put it in there. Um, it's not like just because the money's there doesn't mean the money's getting spent. Um, we can hope that this is not as big a deal as, um, as it seems that it might be. Well, she did. She told me also, everything has to be transcribed. Yeah. Those meetings, you know, went hours. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's unbelievable that somebody is appealing it, actually, because. Yeah. I, I'm sure that I have a solid four weeks of my life, you know, yep. four working weeks of my life. And that it wasn't part. something that was approved, you know, right away. It mm -hmm. also went back and the number of. Um, Lots went from 11 to six mm -hmm. and the commission did its job, I think. But anyway, that's yeah. life and we can't. So what's the commission's or what's the, uh, the board's um, view on this? Should we have more to contingency or what do you think? I, I would like to consider the value of having to go back to the town for a specific amount of money relating specifically to this project so the town understands the cost of it. I kind of like that. Yeah. Well, then you could put, or you could just put it into wetlands, but it would have to be explained at your public hearing. Well, I think what John is saying is not to add any more. Do it. Yeah, correct. Exactly, Andy. Yeah, and that way, should we have to add more, um, it's very clear to the town why wow. we have to add more. So you might not even adding it into contingency or, yeah. That's my take. That, yep. that, I like that. Yeah. Uh, does anyone? I mean, you have the authority to move 20,000 from department to department or out of contingency to that, but to John's point, yep. 
townspeople should know what it's for. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So then you don't and have... How much is it? 30? 30, 30, 33. 33. Thank you. You just put in a percentage of the budget. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with leaving it as is. Does anyone disagree with that? No, I'm fine with it. Yep. I Me agree. Too. Okay. Um, what else? We've got time for one more meeting before the public hearing on this. Uh, I can't even know what week is it? Jeez, let me think. Yeah, next Tuesday, right? Yes, yeah, so you have a meeting already. Your regular meeting is next Tuesday. Okay, so let's, um, I'd like to think about ending tonight's meeting. Um, and we will uh, make the decision. at our next regular meeting um was that may well actually we won't do that we will uh we will have the number that we'll present to the public hearing at that point um do we need an executive session in that meeting just to have it scheduled in the event that we probably ought to schedule one and then yeah. we don't have to use it you never have to use executive session if you have it scheduled um but if you don't have it scheduled it can be difficult to add and you cannot add it to a special meeting um, but that's something Julie and I will uh, talk about when we make the agenda. So, thank you. What else? Is there anything else anyone needs to cover tonight? Andy, I have a question. Um, how many how many days does this um, public hearing have to be noticed before? Are we meeting the required? If we meet on Tuesday, is that going to be enough time? I guess is my question. It's our next regular meeting, so Tuesday should be. Oh, you mean if that's a good question? Yeah, you're cutting it close, actually. But you don't have to put it in the paper. Um, it needs to go online, and I could put it out in my email blast. And so, when, when is it? The twenty six? Yeah. How many days? This is Julie. Um, we've. I've already discussed with Jimmy getting it posted Friday. All right. So I believe that will be enough time. You're gonna get talking this Friday or next Friday? This Friday. This Friday. We're gonna post it on the website following the COVID rules. Okay, but you're not gonna have a number until the following Tuesday. Yeah, we're not yeah, so that's my point. Um that's a problem. No, no. Uh, you know it's got to it's got to go on first thing. One, two, three, four, five. It's got to go on first thing Wednesday morning. Okay. Um, really, Julie, Jim, can unless, you do unless that? you want to make a special meeting and vote the budget, that would that would make it um, perfectly clear that we have enough time. Like when? Like special meeting would be when? Monday. You mean rather than Tuesday, Monday? Hey, Kim, how long do you think it's going to get? Uh, it will take you to uh, get, there's really only a couple of numbers that are changing, but unfortunately, it changes more lines in the budget. So right. it's, and you yeah. need a couple of options for mill rates. Yeah. How Honestly, many days does it need to be noticed before before the town meeting? I'm sorry, the public hearing. Is it five? It's five. Okay, thank you. Some of these meetings are seven, believe it or not, but it's five. I will confirm that. But Kim, Baron? Yep. You, How long is it going to take me to make all these changes? Yeah. And get them out? Um, You're not going home tonight. <laughs> I'm going to stay here all night long. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll bring you a thermos uh, of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it'll it'll probably take me a good part of a day to to do it all the right way. So I will clear my schedule tomorrow and do it. Okay. So you can get it as soon as you you need it. Um, 
so out of an abundance of caution, should we schedule a special meeting for this coming Monday? Why not? Um, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I can make it. I'm I'll good. Be here. All right. Unless so, you want to do Friday or Thursday <laughs> of this week. I can't do Thursday. I've got a, um, I'm going to be on a webinar. Um, so. Yep. Monday's fine. Monday at seven. Monday at seven. And then are we canceling Tuesday? Uh, we would cancel Tuesday. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm going to leave Tuesday up. I can cancel that Tuesday morning. Um, All right. Just in case um, something unexpected happens. Okay. Julie, can you be there on Monday? I will be there. Awesome. <laughs> That's the first person you should ask. That's, you know, I, I trust Julie to speak up. She's not shy. I, I would have spoken up. You're right. <laughs> um, okay. Then if there's, uh, Julie, will you send that agenda out then? Um, I will get it out tomorrow. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, is there any further business tonight? Nope. Great job, to Andy. Oh. Great job, Andy. Thank yes, you. Yes, well done. Great job. I, I agree. Nice meeting, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Take care, Ed. Thank you all for coming. Oh. Take care. Can I adjourn? Adjourn? Adjourn. 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 Who wants to second it? Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Good night, good night everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening.